In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. My Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the glorification of your Christ and the light of the Holy Spirit have unlocked for us the gates of eternity, grant we pray that partaking of so great a gift, our devotion may grow deeper and our faith be strengthened. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and is with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived at Caesarea on a visit to Festus. Since they spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king, saying, There is a man here left in custody by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered them that it was not Roman practice to hand over an accused person before he has faced his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against their charge. So when they came together here, I made no delay. The next day I took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His accusers stood around him but did not charge him with any of the crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but who Paul claimed was alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate this controversy, I asked if he were willing to go to Jerusalem and there stand trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he, had, that he be held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our trans transgressions from us. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you mighty in strength, who do his bidding. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Spirit 
will teach you everything and remind you of all I told you. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to, say, to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he said, that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. As we human beings, there is a little bit of Peter in each of us. This truth must be seen as good news because it frees Jesus to speak to us as he did to Peter in today's gospel and it frees us too to answer as uh, Peter did. Peter's love was little, imperfect, and far from what Jesus expected of him. Jesus came down to the level of the love of Peter, which he was only capable of accepting it with compassion and entrust his mission. Peter, in an instant, was held of his imperfect love at the sight of self-sacrificial love in Jesus. He is a transformed man. The new Peter is the miracle of love, example of the power of understanding and forgiving love. With infinite delicacy, Jesus gives Peter a triple chance to self redeem from with him. Paradoxically, it is our very sin that sets us aside for Jesus' special attention. If we do not experience God as merciful and forgiving, we may not experience God at all. Follow me comes with a very high praise. It is to love him, not just to like him as a friend. It is to have other people make demands on us and lead us where we may not wish to go. Today, Jesus calls Peter, the rock of the church, to accept divine caritas as the heart of his own life 
and ministry. We pray for our Holy Father, the Pope. We also pray for ourselves that no matter what our vocation may be, our lives will also reflect this divine outpouring of love. With confidence in our God who hears us, let us bring our needs before him. For the church, as the body of Christ here on earth, may the Lord grant us patience for one another, bearing with one another in love, with humble and gentle hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. For world, national, and local leaders, may the God who gives wisdom to the wise of knowledge to the discerning grant them just and prudent the decision making. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are persecuted for their faith in Christ. May the hope of the resurrection fill them with courage and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us here, may the grace of God embolden and strengthen us in our lives of discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, marked with the sign of faith, especially we pray for Linda Couch. May they come to share in the glory of the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. For our own intention, which we going today in the Mass, Let us pray to the Lord. Almighty and eternal God, hear our prayers and answer them according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of our creation, for through our goodness we have received the bread we offer you from the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of our creation, for through our goodness we have received the one we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands. You have become our spiritual dream. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look mercifully, O Lord, we pray. 
upon the sacrificial gifts of your people, and that they may become acceptable to you. Let the coming of the Holy Spirit cleanse our conscience through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight that he might make us sharers in this div divinity. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. The sun and the highest, blessed is your God, is the name of the Lord. You are in holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the default, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For tis the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her the fullness of charity together with friends of the Pope and on the clergy. Remember also brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may present glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and earth is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us. Into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Love none our sins, but on the fact of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your love, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us have each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. When the spirit of truth comes, he will teach you all truth, says the Lord. Alleluia.
Let us pray. O oh God, by whose mysteries we are cleansed and nourished, grant we pray that this banquet which you give us may bring everlasting life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Today we begin adoration in the church, and later, about 10, 15 minutes, I move the Jesus Christ to the chapel and will be this place for adoration between Masses today and uh, right now and 11. <laughs> 